exciting. Blimey, so. In this video, it's time to do some um, engine checking on the Invercar. Uh, why is it leaking so much oil? Is it actually generating a decent amount of compression? Uh, I haven't got my microphone on today, it's charging up at the moment. So you'll have to bear with me, this is a bit old school again. But uh, I've just removed the hinge pins so I can remove the bonnet because that makes life easier. Gives much better access to the engine. So, um, and you're actually too high, so come down here. <coughs> so I can also remove this hoop. Uh, that hoop is the bonnet support. Uh, access is now much better. Because on the underside of the bonnet, uh, there, there is um, all this cowling for the engine cooling. And it, it means that even when you lift the bonnet up, it doesn't actually get out of your way very well. Uh, just bring you back in for a look here. So, a quick reminder of the engine in the Invercar. It's a Steyr Pooch um, air-cooled flat twin, 493cc, uh, a rating somewhere around 20 brake horsepower. Um, not too sure exactly. Austrian, as fitted to the Austrian-built Fiat 500. Steyr Pooch didn't like the... Um, the straight twin engine that Fiat used themselves so they developed this one which is very much very inspired by Volkswagen it is like half um, of um, a Volkswagen flat four um, I can see oil here I don't know where that oil is coming from um, there's yeah evidently quite a lot of oil leaks I think the oil filler neck itself might be one source but uh, we, we shall have a look I might get the top cover off actually uh, if I disconnect this breather pipe get that out of the way and I can unclip from there and I should be able to lift that off there we go that's the top cowling removed uh, this here is the oil cooler so you've got the um, diner start unit here uh, this uh, both charges the engine and starts it um, hence the two drive belts, which should be a lot tighter than they are. I need to replace those, but I've got an issue going on where the exhaust is actually pushing the bottom plate up and uh, not leaving enough space to get the belts off. So, um, all the good times. Um, having a look in the top, yeah, I can see a bit of oiliness there somewhere. I hope it isn't the cooler. I suppose, it, yeah, it could be the cooler leaking, couldn't it? Uh, thinking about it, the old cooler slots into the top of the block. Uh, it does look a bit oily down there, but not hideously so. I don't think that's the major source of our issue. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult to work out where it's all coming from. But another thing I want to do is cook, connect up the compression tester and uh, just turn her over and we can see what sort of compression she's making. Uh, slight issue there is I probably need to run her for a bit because the battery is not good at holding charge so I don't think she'd actually spin the engine over enough for a compression test so um, cover back on and we'll give her a run that also makes life more fun because then everything is nice and hot uh, it's always exciting when you're working on an engine I presume mechanics in Formula 1 and Le Mans um, have asbestos fingers I think It's such a fiddly pain in the backside, but still, it's a lot easier to remove than a 2CV cowl. There we go. Get the battery back up. There we go, and we'll see. If young Tuck wants to play today. Got choke on, check I haven't disconnected any wires inadvertently. 
and uh, we'll try again. Alright, with the um, engine running and the top cover off, I can quite clearly see oil leaking out of the oil cooler. Seems to be doing it in a couple of spots. Actually, you can see the shiny shiny going on. Uh, these oil coolers are uh, a little prone to damage quite easily. They're very delicate. Uh, this one's obviously seen better days. So, uh, fortunately, I have Tuck's original engine. Uh, a reminder that the uh, distributor seized in the original engine and uh, I managed to pretty much destroy the engine block trying to get it out. Uh, not my finest moment but uh, nonetheless that's what happened. You can see the belts flapping around so I really need to do something about them at some point. But, but yeah I've got the original engine so I can take this off and swap it and hopefully the other one is undamaged uh, and that will hopefully stop that leak. I thought the leak has to be somewhere near the top of the engine because it seems to be covering almost all of it. So um, at least we've found it. That's all the good times as they say. Right, so we've done that. I think the next job is probably going to be to um, hook up the compression tester just to see what sort of compression we've got. I'm not sure what the figures should be on this engine. It's a very low compression engine. It's only about six, uh, six and a half to one compression, which is nothing. They were originally designed to run on two star fuel, which is um, pretty awful stuff. Uh, we don't even have it in the UK anymore. So she must feel like she's on rocket fuel on 95 octane. Uh, so uh, go and get the com in, uh, compression tester and we'll see what difference that makes. This is my compression tester. It's a Pulsar 702. Uh, I suspect it's actually older than um, the Invercar itself. But uh, I love it. Bought it on eBay. Uh, nice and cheap. And uh, this is what it looks like. Nice um, gauge on it. So um, we'll get the plugs out and we'll have a look. We're going to take both plugs out so it's you know easier for it to turn over, jam the throttle open, and uh, away we go. Right, keep an eye on that for me, won't you? I've got to go and operate the starter and hold the throttle wide open. Ooh, that looks pretty good to me. That's almost 120 PSI. So um, I think we can say that side isn't too bad. That's good. It seems to be holding more or less. There we go. Yeah, good, good compression sounds. Right, let's try the other side. Getting this in, not the easiest, uh, if I'm honest. Uh, very difficult to find the hole, if you'll pardon the expression. Stop your innuendo. That's your mind, not mine. Right, the other side. Oh, if anything, that's even better. Wow, over 120 PSI, and I thought this was the weaker side. So we have got a slight imbalance, um, but I don't think it's anything too drastic. 
Um, so that means I'm probably not going to strip down the engine. I was wondering about doing that. I thought it was leaking oil from all over the place, but it might just be the oil cooler. It's losing a bit of compression there. Maybe the valves aren't seating perfectly in those heads. Let's just talk um, spark plugs for a moment. Um, Tuck's got a merry band of um, nicked them from somewhere uh, plugs. Uh, this one isn't looking all that happy. Uh, it's a bit gingery on top. Uh, possibly because that's a B7 HS NGK plug. It might be um, too cool a plug. Is that the way it works? Um, so I've ordered some B6, which I think might be better. The other side, we've got an IQM C42S out of a 2CV. And that, that looks much better. And that is sort of equivalent to an NGK um, B6, I, I believe, in the height in the heat scale. I always get a bit confused about the heat scales on plugs. Uh, of course Tuck spat out a plug last year and uh, I think this is the only one I had to hand so I, that's why I shoved the um, iQuam in. Um, but I think for now uh, the only plugs... oh jeepers, weather's getting up again. The only plugs I've got to hand are B8HS which um, I wrongly purchased um, for Ellie. Ellie actually runs sevens. Um, I think I'm going to shove them in. They're not ideal. They might sort of not cope very well if I was doing a lot of driving, but I'm not. This is, Tuck is not doing much this time of year. Um, so um, I'm going to fit those and then we're going to get on to changing the um, oil cooler. But first, T. Still looking for a, a good source of um, large mugs. Hopefully news soon on that. Ah, splendid. I strongly, strongly suspect that the thread in the right hand um, cylinder head has finally given up the ghost. Um, I can't get it very, very tight. Uh, so that's bad. Maybe I'm going to have to get the engine out and get the head off uh, after all. Uh, or try a time cert insert or something. But uh, it's raining outside so I'm going to bring her back in before I do the oil cooler swap. And then finish my tea. rather exciting noise was. car really does not roll very well. Come on, Tuck. Whoa. This floor's quite slippy because several cars have leaked oil all over it. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want Tuck in because Tuck's now blocking in the Matiz. I think I need to roll took out and get the Matiz out. Ugh. Well, that's just what you want when you've got a car outside with no window on it. Yep, ideal I'd say. Bloody marvellous. Oh. oh well, cars need to move. I get a bit of protection from my Dutch cat. Whoa, that sounds wrong. Oh, go on, Tuck. I hate the sloopy floor in this garage. Jeepers. 
Oh. There we go. A bit of a reshuffle again. So hopefully Myrtle will be ready to come out and play. Uh, but took took is badly broken so uh, I'm gonna have to work out what to do about that whether I'm gonna helicoil it uh, or try and get someone to do a time cert which is a slightly better uh, approach but it's really difficult to get access to it so it might be worth me getting the cylinder head off that wasn't how today was meant to pan out but there you go that's hub nut sometimes uh, I shall say thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe before you go. I'll come a little bit closer to the microphone. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.